Genesis 19. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. Lot is sitting in the gate of the city. This is a sign of being an elder of a ruler of a, a leader, a political leader in the city. Lot is involved in Sodom's government. He is, even if he's not some type of government official, he is certainly influential in this wicked city. Remember, he in the past pitched his tent towards Sodom. Now he is in Sodom, deeply ingrained in its culture himself. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed himself with his face to the earth, a Middle Eastern greeting and sign of hospitality and reverence, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly. So they turned aside to him and he entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. So these guys have been fed by Abraham during the heat of the day. They've had basically a really nice lunch. Now, uh, near evening, they're arriving in Sodom. They're getting a nice big supper, nice big dinner. Depending on which term you use there for the evening meal, they're getting a nice another meal, a feast from Lot. They were going to spend the night just in the town square, not a very good place to stay, but Lot insists they go with him. Verse 4, they're about ready now, they feasted, about ready to go to bed. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Lot went out to the men at the entrance and shut the door behind him and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please. Only do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shadow of my roof. Now, what's going on here? Well, the word no here clearly is talking about something sexual. These men want to engage in homosexual activity, homosexual rape of these men. This is a nasty thing. All the men, the young and old men, surround the house and want to take these two angelic messengers and rape them. Lot, his first thing, his first statement is really not a good thing. Yes, he's pleading with them as he continues on not to take the men because they're under his roof, they're under his hospitality, don't do these wicked things. He is kind of talking about some moral truths and even some biblical truths there. But he prefaces all of that with something very bad. Don't act wickedly. You know, there's kind of a moral statement. But wait, I got two daughters who are virgins. Take them. Do whatever you want with them, all these men in the city. What a bad thing. Dad is what I think of every time I approach this text. We're reading the scripture. Okay, that's the first thing we do. We're using the soap method. Read the scripture. Letter O. Observe the text. S-O-A. Apply the text. Application. And then P. Pray the text. An application would be not to respond as Lot did if we ever find ourselves in a compromising situation. Take a biblical stand. But too often, like Lot, believers, we all have the same temptation, and sadly, we often have given in to kind of compromise and mellow and offer an alternative that, while it's not really a good alternative either, it's a little bit better. So instead of engaging in homosexual activity, at least engage in heterosexual activity. That's kind of what Lot is doing here. But it's still wrong. It's still immoral. Let's go on. Verse 9. But they said, stand back. And they said, this fellow came to sojourn and he has become the judge. 
They're talking about Lot. Lot came to, you know, camp out, kind of visit, get his fortune, whatever. Now he's becoming our judge. I mean, come on, isn't that what the world says about believers? Why, why don't you stop judging me? Why don't you be more tolerant? Why don't you stop having antiquated morals and antiquated values and traditional... Stop being that way and just let us be. That's what the world says about believers. Let's see what else it says. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So what are they going to do? Well, they're going to take Lot and most likely their plan is to abuse him. Then they pressed hard against the man Lot and drew near to break the door down. But the men reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. That's the two angelic messengers. Verse 11, And they struck with blindness the men who were at the entrance of the house, both small and great, so that they wore themselves out, groping for the door. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here, son-in-laws, sons, daughters, or anyone you have in the city? Bring them out of the place. For we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against its people has become great before the Lord, and the Lord sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out to his sons-in-law who were to marry his daughters. Up, get out of this place. The Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-law to be jesting. I want us to pause right here and look at this. Lot obeys the men. He understands now God's revealed through these men that God's going to destroy the city because of its wickedness. Go, gather anybody you have. He goes to the ones his daughters are, it reads apparently are engaged to and says, come on, hurry. Come with me. God's going to destroy the city. They just laugh at him. They just think he's joking. What a sad thing it is when believers pleading for the truth of the gospel and the truth of God's word and God's will, when a believer is proclaiming those things that, that the world simply thinks that we're joking, what a horrible testimony that is. But why did they think Lot was joking? Well, most likely because of the way Lot had been living. He had been living in worldly Sodom, and we're going to see that Sodom and his backslidden ways have deep tendrils around his heart that are hard to break. As the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he lingered. He's lingering in the midst of impending judgment. So the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him out and set him outside the city. And as they brought them out, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. And Lot said to them, Oh, no, my lords. Behold, your servant has found favor in your sight. And you have shown me great kindness in saving my life. But I cannot escape to the hills, lest disaster overtake me and I die. Behold, this city is near enough to flee to. And it is a little one. Let me escape there. It is not a... Is it not a little one? And my life will be saved. He said to them, Behold, I grant you this favor also, that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Escape there quickly. I can do nothing till you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar, which means little. Lot is lingering in the midst of impending judgment. The angels literally have to, there's two angels. They each have to grab Lot and his wife and a, a daughter, each, they have to take one in each hand and drag them out of the city and tell them to run because they are going to destroy the city. And it, it very specifically says in the text, because of God's mercy, they drag Lot out of the city. They're being raptured, so to speak, from the city. Another point, though, that I think is very important is the text specifically says in verse 21, I'll grant you this favor, but... I will not overthrow, but I can do nothing until you arrive there. They have to escape. This reminds me of the rapture. And this is why I believe in the pre-tribulational rapture of the church. Now, I believe many texts talk about it, but this especially. Even the wicked believer, they, while the wicked believer will not hear, well done, good and faithful servant, the wicked believer will still be raptured by Jesus Christ and saved and kept till the end. The Lord Jesus Christ will not allow any of his sheep to be snatched from his hand. Even if they're backslidden, even if they had just denied Christ like Peter, the believer will be 
saved by the Lord. Because of his mercy, not because of anything we have done or deserve, but because of his mercy alone. Well, the entire reason for our salvation points to God and his mercy. Nothing about ourself or our goodness or our choice. Or, no, 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 no. Everything points to God. He is the one that provides the way, makes the way, and takes us by the hand. But it's also, I think, very important. They have to arrive there before God can initiate his judgment. And that's what we see happen as you read through the Revelation and as you read all throughout the Old Testament. God has to preserve his people and take his people out before he sends the judgment. Even throughout the midst of the judgment of Israel and Judah for their great sin when many are slaughtered, God preserves a remnant in that time who seek him and serve him. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zoar. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife behind him looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Remember, this has all happened overnight. Abraham had pleaded with God, if there be ten righteous in the city, Abraham returns to that spot where he had talked with the Lord. Verse 28, And he looked down, so he's apparently on some high point looking down. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the valley. And he looked, and behold, smoke of the land went up like the smoke of a furnace. So it was when God destroyed, so it was that when God destroyed the cities of the valley, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst and over of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had lived. God in his mercy and also Abraham's intercession moved. Now David Platt in, a, in Secret Church 2019 does a great explanation of God's work through prayer, one of the best I've ever heard theologically, and very simple too, and I won't do it justice, but you can find the clip I'm sure on YouTube. But David Platt talks about how um, how prayer is essential to God's work. God established in his plan that he has foreordained, foreordained from the foundation of the earth that we would pray and that God would respond in response to our prayer. God planned all of this, and it's so amazing that God has chosen to use us so that we would be part of the process. God, God has called us and ordained for us to cry out and intercede like Abraham did for Lot and for those, those cities. If there be righteous people, Lord, will you spare them? And because of Abraham's intercession, God moves in mercy. Our intercession as believers matters. Final judgment is coming. Hell is coming for anyone who dies without Jesus Christ. And final judgment upon this entire earth is coming before Jesus literally ushers in his kingdom. Those things are facts. It's not if they're going to happen or maybe they'll happen. They will happen and they are happening. And our job as believers is to cry out for God's mercy. We ask God to mercifully intervene in the lives of those we love and for even those that we do not know to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and their Lord. They would repent of their sin and be saved. Brothers and sisters, may we do that. Lot's story is a very sad story. God has mercy, but Lot himself is only saved by the skin of his teeth. Lot still is worldly, even as God is working to rescue him and redeem him. He still wants to go to just a little city. And Lot basically loses his family in the process. He lost his wife. She loved, she loved Sodom even more than Lot. It appears she looked back. Lot obeyed that one directive, it appears, but not his wife. She turned to salt. And what we'll look at in our next episode is that Lot even basically loses his daughters. I mean, the wickedness and the vileness that they resort to is just astounding. Lot's sin, Lot's backsliness, Lot's worldliness, even though he was a believer, affected his entire family, affected others, even affected his testimony we saw in Sodom. 
And that's a powerful lesson for us to bear in mind. Father, thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name.